Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The fellas heading to the Big 12 on a Friday as Baylor goes on the road to play the Texas Longhorns. This is a really interesting matchup in the sense that what both teams want to do on the offensive side of the ball, which is run the ball, both defenses are very, very good at. Tough game to read. Baylor catching nine points on the road. It should be a really interesting one. Before we get into the matchup, though, again, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. Again, we love making these videos, and we love talking football with you guys in the comment section. And the support you guys have shown absolutely means the world. It means a ton, so we really do appreciate that. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get into this game. I want to start with this Texas team because, again, we talk a lot about this Texas football team and, and how high the ceiling is for them, not only this year, but for the years coming and how young this team is. If you would have told me this Texas team is playing week 12 and their defense is only allowing three and a half yards per carry, only allowing 20 points per game to opposing offenses, I would have told you they're in line to play for a Big 12 championship and potentially a college football playoff spot. That's how good I thought this offense could have been when you take a look at all the talent that they had coming into the season. Obviously, it's taken a little bit of time for this offense to click, especially Quinn Ewers and some of those talented wide receivers. That being said, they can run the football at an extremely high level, and that's kind of where I want to start. Texas, when they're playing and when they're scoring points, you look at what they did against Kansas, they're running the football. And then when they're not scoring and when they're struggling to move the ball, they can establish any form of the run game. You look at two weeks ago against TCU, who was able to really stop Roshan Johnson, stop Bijan Robinson. And then when Quinn Ewers has too much, when he's being asked of too much, he's really struggled. I mean, Quinn Ewers has struggled all year kind of finding that chemistry with his receivers. He's only completing 55% of his balls for 14 touchdowns, six interceptions. Everything's looked kind of hard, and he has some talent. Like Jatavion Sanders, one of the best tight ends in the country. Xavier Worthy, Jordan Whittington, probably one of the best wide receiver one, wide receiver two duos in the country. But this passing game has really, really struggled. Now, on the flip side, they like to run the football. The question is for this game is, can Texas run the football against Baylor? We took a look at the Texas-Kansas game last week, and why I love Texas so much is Kansas stinks at stopping the run. And you look at this Texas team and what they can do on offense with guys like Bijan Robinson, with guys like Roshan Johnson. Again, Roshan Johnson is legitimately a top 10 running back in the country. He's just behind the best running back in the country. This running back group, I wouldn't be surprised if Roshan Johnson makes some serious noise in the NFL. That's how good I think he is. He just doesn't get his touches because you can't really take that many touches away from B. John Robinson. The question for this game is, can they run the football on a Baylor team that is very, very good up front? When you look at Baylor and their defense, yeah, it's been a little bit disappointing, but I think primarily it's been a little bit more disappointing in the pass rush department and in the secondary, kind of letting teams throw the ball on them. In the run game, they've been pretty stout, only allowing 3.8 yards per carry. You take a look at some of the guys in the front seven, you know what they have with guys like Siaki Ika. He's been an absolute dog. Dylan Doyle, Matt Jones at linebacker, both very good guys. TJ Franklin, Gabe Hall. I like a lot of their guys in the front seven. They establish the line of scrimmage. They get behind the line of scrimmage. They create negative plays. Texas relies on that run game. Again, when you see this offense struggle, it is because they can't run the football, and then they struggle to throw the football in those third and long spots. That's kind of the key to this Texas team is can they run the football? can to kind of stay on schedule and not ask Quinn Ewers to do too much because, again, when Quinn Ewers is asked to do too much, that is when they struggle. Another thing to look at is Baylor has started to turn the ball over a little bit. That's a little bit intriguing, but, again, I think it starts with Texas establishing that run game, and then you flip the side, and it's a very similar story. This Baylor team has a very good offense line, led by guys like Connor Galvin at that left tackle spot who's in road grade. This has been a different offense when they've gotten Craig Williams back. Again, he's been hurt for a little bit of the season, kind of hasn't really been healthy. He's been healthy the last couple of weeks, and he's been an absolute menace running the football. He's a little bit of a smaller guy, but when he gets that seam, they run a lot of that stretch zone stuff, and when he gets upfield, he's making linebackers, he's making safeties miss, and he's hitting the big play. True freshman Richard Reese has also been very good. Quillen Jones has been very good. They have three running backs who are capable of toting the rock. They're capable of hitting big plays, and they all do a little something different. Craig Williams kind of being the smaller explosive back. Richard Reese probably more the all-around back, and then Quillen Jones kind of the bruiser back who's, what, 230 pounds, kind of a, a bowling ball type player. This Baylor team, again, when you look at what has given them struggles on the offensive side of the ball, 
it's been defenses being able to stop the run. And again, this Texas team, this is something we're not used to seeing. And I get it. Texas fans are a little bit disappointed at kind of the outcome of the season, especially with how good the defense has been. But it does seem like the culture for Texas has changed a little bit. I am not used to seeing Texas be so tough up front. You take a look at some of those guys that formerly Texas is a team that struggles to establish the line of scrimmage. It struggles to tackle in space. That couldn't be farther from the truth this year. I think they have one of the best linebacker duos in the country and Jalen Ford, who I think is a legit stud. DeMarvian Overshone finally starting to put together all that athletic talent he's had. Two years ago, I had him on my draft board, thinking he was one of the best linebackers in the country. Hasn't really panned out. This year, he's starting to put it together. You have guys like Ovi Agofu up front, uh, Tavandre Sweet, Keandre Sweat, Baron Sorrell. The list goes on with guys who can play in that front seven at Texas, and you're not necessarily surprised with how many negative plays they create. Again, guys like Baron Sorrell, nine tackles for a loss. Ovia Govu, seven and a half tackles for a loss. Baron, nine tackles for a loss. Overshone, eight tackles for a loss. Jalen Ford, eight tackles for a loss. When does Baylor struggle? In a very similar way. They throw the ball a lot with play action. Play action is effective when you can run the ball effectively and when you see loaded boxes. Not as effective when you can't get that run game going. So to me, it kind of seems like both teams kind of match up in a very similar way. What team is going to be able to run the football on the opposing defense that's been good at stopping the run all year? Kind of kind is telling me what this game is going to turn out. I really liked what I saw from Baylor last week against TCU. I think you play that game a couple more times and Baylor's winning that football game, kind of last minute field goal. They should close that game out. And you normally don't see Dave Aranda coach teams not close those type of games out. This team has lost a lot of talent to the NFL last year. They don't have like – Baylor's not a team that recruits well enough to lose the amount of talent they did last year to the NFL draft and expect to kind of come back and, and be a Big 12 contender. I think they needed a year. That doesn't change my opinion on Dave Aranda one bit. I think he's one of the best head coaches in the whole entire country. And when you ask me what head coach would you want – for the next five years or next 10 years or next 15 years to be running your program. Dave Aranda is on that short list. Would I put Dave Aranda? I don't know, but I think he's a phenomenal coach that knows how to run a program. The next step for that Baylor team is recruiting like Texas does, because if they get some of the talent that Texas is getting, this Baylor team for as well coached as they are, they're going to be a powerhouse. This game, getting to the pick. I think Texas probably wins this game. The team I probably trust a little bit more, especially on the defensive side of the ball, because they're just a little bit more sal- solid. Baylor kind of struggles in the back end. They've given up some explosive plays. Texas, for not having the most elite, efficient passing game, they can hit some explosive plays to guys like Xavier Worthy. I think they'll be able to find those. To me, nine points just seems a little too much. I think this game will be close. I think both teams are going to try to run the ball. and I actually kind of have two picks here. I like the under just because I I think both teams are going to try to run the football. I don't think either team is going to be that successful running the football. And 56 just seems a little high for two offense that are going to be running. The time is going to be burning off the clock. And I don't know if they're going to be running the ball that effectively. I think you could see a game that's like 28 to 21, maybe 24 to 30. I think it's going to be kind of a lower scoring game. And I do think that Because it's going to be a lower scoring game, I think Baylor probably covers that nine and a half points as underdogs. Just seems too much for two teams that haven't been great on offense and have very good defenses. I think this game is going to be low scoring. I think nine and a half points just seems a little bit high for Texas to cover. I think they probably win this game. I just don't know if they cover the nine and a half points. So I'm rocking with Baylor at plus nine and a half. And then give me a little bit of the under. Again, I don't think these two teams are going to be able to run the ball as effectively as they want to. And both offenses really rely on that run game to get their offense going. They both like to use play action, especially Baylor. And if that play action isn't as effective as you can't get that run game going, I think Baylor is going to struggle to move the football. Two weeks ago, they only put up three points against Kansas State because of that fact. They just could not move the football. They could not run the football. And then for most of that game, found themselves in third and long and a lot of three and outs. So that'll do it for the review. Again, I kind of do like Baylor to cover that nine and a half or keep it at least close. And then I do like that under 56 just because time is going to be wasting off that clock with the run game. I don't think either team is going to run the ball that effectively. Yeah, no, we appreciate all the support you guys have shown. Again, if you like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate y'all and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.